All right. Thank you very much, and you are welcome to this channel. Indeed, this channel is dedicated for inspiring you to become whoever that you want to be. Today, too, God has given us the life. If we are alive and kicking, we are so much grateful unto the Spirit of God. As a believer, that's the only thing that I can say. Kindly do me a favor by clicking on the subscription button and then giving it a thumb up on the not notification bell so that anytime that we upload a new video, you will certainly be the first person to get it. Share it to a lot of people as much as you can so that they can also have their share in watching this video. Thank you very much. Today, I would love to talk to you about one or two things, especially if you are youth and you are living in a continent of Africa. For the look of things, gradually, the youth are losing it all, especially the youth in the Western a part of Africa, in West Africa, in the likes of Nigeria, Ghana, and then the people in West Africa. We are losing it all. The youth in this hemisphere, they have nothing to boast of because of our bad political leaders, the kind of people that we have in a society. They have lost it to our religious leaders. They have lost it to our traditional leaders. And the political leaders who are to stand in and on, intercede on the behalf of the vulnerable ones in the society, we have also lost it to them. One day, when the axe entered the bush, the tree over there said, Look, the handle is one of us. When the axe entered a bush, the tree over there said to themselves that, Look, the handle is one of us. It is very pathetic that the challenges and the harm, the heinous crime that is being committed against our fellow in the society, especially in West Africa, it is one of us. The handle, the leaders is one of us. It is the leaders that has deprived us absolutely from everything. Now the youths in this hemisphere, we have nothing to boast of. Higher unemployment rate. Everything seems sinking. You waste your time seven, eight years to achieve an academic excellence only for you to graduate and come out and be figured out as an unemployment person. You waste your time, your energy, your resource so many years to achieve academic excellence only for you to graduate, come out and be figured out as an unemployment figure. At the end of the day, you have to go back to your parent and beg them for something. So the youth in Africa are in a rush to the Western world. Whilst God has given us a good soil, we have everything. We have the gold diamond. Think of, we have all the natural resource. Things that we need to, 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 to depend and build our country. We have it. But because of bad governance, because of bad leadership, because of our attitude, we are misusing everything, any opportunity that the black man will suddenly lay his or her hand on. He misuses it. Now there is a saying that when the thief kisses you, after the kissing, kindly do justice by counting your teeth. I'm sure that after, after receiving a kiss from a, thief, from a thief, you must lose something. 
So the only time that the politicians will come to us is when they need our votes. It's when they need our thumb. When you need, when you have an encounter with a politician in a society, when they come and they begin to give you rights, sugar, ask yourself that in what cause, because you have been in power for over four years, you have never given me anything. So why the sudden gift? It's like a thief kissing you. After receiving the kiss from a thief, kindly count your teeth. Who knows? Maybe some of your teeth might be stolen by this same teeth. After coming to you, humbling themselves, clothing themselves with a sheep whilst they know within themselves that they are wolves. They come in there, pretend to be sheep, to pretend to be suffering like they have you people at heart. They lure you people and then you go out there Queue up and cast your votes in their favor. After ca casting your votes in their favor, they boycott you people. They dump you people. They go out there and enjoy life. The luxuries of the world. You live a flamboyant life. Forgotten the main agenda. The main objectives on the table. The reasons that made you went out there and then cast your votes in their favor. They forget it. Let me tell you, I am not a politician and I will never get up one day and become one. But the reality here is, you being a youth, get up and do something for yourself. Because we have received countless of empty promises and yet none of these promises have been able to come into fruition. So now I am challenging you as a youth to take the bull by its own and do something for yourself. Even if it takes for you to sell something, do it. For, for Forget about your intellectual prowess because at the end of the day, we will all meet at the junction of money. Whether you are educated or not, we will all meet at the junction of money. The reason why you are you are you have availed yourself to achieve academic excellence, higher academic excellence in the society is because at the end of the day, you want life to become softer for you. But after completing your first degree, your diploma, your masters, what did you get in return? The only thing you are being recognized as an unemployment figure in the society. Even if you are being employed, you are not receiving what you are entitled to. At the end of the day, you will suffer, work hard, and go home with a chunk. Just 0.00% of whatever that you work for will come back to you. Get up and do something for yourself. Don't sit down. No matter your status in a society, do something. I'm challenging you. Don't give up. Do something. Do something for yourself. Use your hands to do something. Forgetting about your intellectual prowess, whether you're educated or not. Do so get yourself doing something. Because if you sit down and wait on the government to come and employ you, I am telling you that you will fail woefully in your life. Sometimes at the level where you have gotten to, when you sit yourself down and look at what you are expected to get at the level where you are, at your age, what you are looking for, that is not what you are getting. Even if it takes for you to say plantel, even if it takes for you to sell cassava, if it takes for you to sell piotta, sell it. Sell it. Because the society of ours, it never favors the poor. At the end of the day, even heavens, demands that you must lose your earthly life before you can gain access to that heavenly that our men of God have been talking about. If you are, if you are a Christian, you will bear with me that our fathers, our predecessors, our spiritual fathers, our apostles, bishop, they have been advocating heaven to us. But in the realms of the spirit and physically, it is logically reasonable that before you can gain access to heaven, you have to lose your earthly realm. 
and enter into that realm. So it means that you can never achieve something without losing something. You cannot achieve something without losing something. So today, for the look of things and how things are being carried out in our day-to-day -day life, you must lose happiness. You must lose enjoyment. You must lose something to get whatever that you want. You must set loose. You must set a place. You lose something to set yourself on fire to get something. It is not easy to come by just a hundred dollars because things are gradually falling apart. We are sinking as a nation. We are sinking as an entire African race. Today, look at the protest that is being carried out in UK. Now they are demanding that the blacks should go back to their country. Why? Because they themselves, because of how populated the blacks have become in that country, now they themselves, they can't even get a job to do. Why is this supposed to be so? It's because of the bad leadership that we have in this country, the bad leadership that we have in Africa, the misuse of our priority. The aim and the priority of an African leader is to get power and abuse it. This is what we are going through. So we have gotten to a level where your intellectual prowess doesn't count. If you think you have your master's, if you think you have your first degree, if you think you have your PhD, your Enfield or whatever, and you sit down and expect the government to employ you and pay you, I'm telling you that at the end of the month, the salary that you receive is a chunk. It's about 0.00% of what you've worked for. The output based on your inputs doesn't tally. Because at the end of the day, the way you get up, if you're a teacher, you get up exactly 5.30 to put things in order, get yourself dressed. You, you are supposed to report in school around 7.30, conduct assembly and start classes around 8 to 8.30. You close around 3. Then you proceed to extra classes. So you, you return home around 4, 4.30. You left your husband you left your, your marriage. You left your children. You left people home because you want to hustle. You want to make ends for a living. You want to do something. And at the end of the day, the input calculated doesn't tally with the output. So you see, you must do something. Do something for yourself. Do something for yourself. At the end of the day, we are all looking for our daily bread. We are all looking for something to eat. The reason why you become a medical doctor, it's not because you want to become a medical doctor and go to heaven with it. It's because you want to, you want to acquire skills so that at the end of the day, that said skill will be able to put food on your table. But today, if you are not careful in the continent of Africa, you will waste your time and acquire skills. And at the end of the day, that said skills can't even take care of you. So at the end of the day, you are expected to create multiple streams of income or else you can't meet your responsibilities daily your daily re responsibilities if you're not able to create multiple streams of income you can't meet your responsibilities electricity tariff has been increased water bill check it rent everything has escalated you can't meet it so you have to devise strategy and methods to create another streams of income to support your day-to-day -day activities or else you, 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 people will see you, regard you as a higher person in a society who has wasted it of entire time to acquire knowledge. But yet the knowledge cannot put food on his table. The knowledge cannot take care of him. Because at the end of the day, you becoming a medical doctor. Even if you are being paid 10,000 dollars cities a day, inflations will hyphen some a major part of your money. 
if you become a medical doctor, if you become a professor, a lecturer, and you are being paid 10,000 Ghana, 12,000 Ghana cities, inflation will take 70% of what? What you take home. Inflation will take 70% of your salary. So at the end of the day, you have to put in extra effort. So you could see very well that you don't have time for jokes because what you are you are carrying in life, the burden upon you is too much. So you've got no time to play. It is very pathetic that the problems we are in, our leaders from the religious sector, from the, from, from the traditional sector, from the political sector, these people are the main causative agents of the problems that we are facing in the society. They are three anomalous cabars. They create, they loot, they share. You waste your time, fight, work hard. Get and save something little. After saving for three, five years, if it is enough, you go out there, give the money to the king or a queen in your society, the chief there, just to acquire a parcel of land, only for you to initiate a theft, come back, and then the, the land, this same land, has been sold to a different person. So you have to save money for another extra three years to take the person to court. And this is what the chiefs in the society are doing to us, our own brother, our own friends, our own leaders, that we, we trusted. We trusted our life, our destiny into their care. They will sell land to you, turn and sell it back to a different person. Now they'll tell you, imagine you, a guy who is 29 years. You have a dream. You want to make it to life. 30, 35 years. You want to make it to life. At the end of the day, how much are you being paid? Just a, a chicken change. And out of your intelligence, your smartness, you will save money in the name of acquiring a parcel of land just to establish yourself. Now, when you buy the land, Kexi demands that you are supposed to build it instantly or else when you leave the land bare just like that. The, 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 the leaders over there, the chiefs in our society, the kings and queens in our society, they will go behind you, they will sneak behind you and sell the same parcel of land to a different person. So by the time you finish fighting over that same land that you bought with your own money, you have wasted almost 10 years of your age. Many people are watching me. Whatever that I'm saying, they, 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 they are a victim of what I'm saying. They work hard. Buy, especially you people living in the Western world. You live in Canada, Germany, US, UK, or whatever, Spain, France. You work hard over there just for you to save, come back to your own country, either Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, or whatever, Togo, Ivory Coast. Just to go to these traditional leaders, give them money to acquire a parcel of land. You go, you come back, and you see somebody putting out a building on it. When you confront the person, this same person will tell you that the land was sold to him or her by the same person who sold it out to you. Such a wicked people who don't have remorse for whatever that they do. They don't have the masses at heart. So all the leaders in the society, they are power-hungry people. They are looking for power. And at the end of the day, they will use that same power that we gave them to fight us. We are being deprived of whatever that belongs to us. When you turn to the, the pastors, even the pastors that we, we believe them, those who gave us a promise that they are taking us to heaven, they are rather duping us. A pastor staging fake miracles. What is the intention of staging that miracle? It's because he wants to prove to you that he is powerful whilst he knows within his or herself that he doesn't have that unction that he has been portraying to be having. Staging fake miracles just to extort money right at the detriment of their own members. So we went to the religious leaders, our chiefs, they betrayed us. We went to our spiritual fathers, the pastors. These people have also betrayed us. Thereby faking miracles, carrying out a propaganda, carrying out a brainwash messages, a higher indoctrination 
indoctrinating us with certain doctrines that are highly uncalled for. This is what our religious leaders are capable of. It is only few people that are authentic, that have the poor masses at heart. We rejected the religious leaders and put our trust in our political leaders. They, these people are even more dangerous than the two people that I've already mentioned. The political leaders, our MPs, the legislature. Today, if you don't have money, you don't even dare go to court because the poor cannot win case over a rich man at a competent court of law. The court is supposed to be there for justice to protect the integrity of the poor, to protect and bind the society. But today, that is not what we are seeing. If you are a poor and you have or you burst into a litigation with a rich man, recite this at the back of your mental faculty that you have lost everything. You have lost everything. You can never go to court. The only time you see the poor at the court is either he's been arrested, it is, the, it is the rich man who took the poor man to that place, or it is the nation, the country that is against that said poor man. Because somebody stole 15 billion, 30 million dollars. That person is walking scot free, nothing. There is no legal administration hunting them, pursuing them, bringing them to book. Nobody. You see a poor man who entrusted his faith, everything, into the hands of the politician, having the perception that the political leaders will come back and pay them handsomely. But only for these people to get power and they will leave them behind. And out of anger, they will go and steal just one plantain, one cassava, one maize, and they will be sentenced 40 years. Such an injustice system in the continent of Africa. It has become the survivor of the fittest. It has become whom you know, not whom you are. Nobody's looking for, nobody does wants to know your identity. Nobody, they don't care. Once you go to the courts and you're not able to provide what the court demands of you, because even at the high court, the court doesn't want you to come. So once you are being taken to high court, you have to go and look for a lawyer. And once you don't have lawyer to be taken to the high court, bear it in mind that you have lost the case because you can't stand and talk to the judge. You can't stand and talk to the judge. So the only time you see the, the politicians, our political leaders, coming back to the society is when we are heading to elections. They pretend to be one of us. They pretend as if they were not the ones who were riding in that V8. As if they were not the ones who were enjoying the flamboyant life. They leave everything behind. Come to you particularly and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one because this is the set time that he needs to fool you again. So that you go out there and cast your vote into their favor. At the end of the day, the one who is being regarded as smart and intelligent in the continent of Africa is somebody who has that capacity, that insight to deceive people and lure them. This is how we see them. If somebody is able to deceive somebody, lure them, we regard those people as intelligent and smart people. Whilst the white people regard people who are intelligent and smart as people who are able to generate a new ideas to produce something that will be of benefit to humanity in the society. But in the Africa, people who are being regarded as wise and intelligent people are people who are able to deceive people, people who are able to lure people, people who are able to blackmail, to sabotage, to hide behind scenes and incite people. They are being regarded as wise and smart people. But in the worst world, in the land of America, in the land of the United Kingdom, in the land of the Indians, when you go there, those who are wise are people who are able to reason up and produce something for the benefits of humanity. People who are able to invent something, they are being regarded 
as wise people. But when he bounced back to the continent of Africa, it's at the other vice versa. Do you think that if the politician comes to you and solve every problem that you're going through, if they give you a better road, if they give you a good education system, if they give you a good health care, if they give you that comfortability that you're looking for, do you think in the next four years, when they come to you, you vote for them? They have this here. But the white man knows clearly that when you vote them into power and they are not able to deliver their policies in the next election years, when they come to you, you will not vote for them. But it's because of the global nature of we Africans and higher illiteracy rate and that tribalism, that tribalistic attitude of ours, these are the weak points, the loopholes that the political leaders, they have seen among us. That is why they are basing on this tribalistic attitude of ours to luring us to cast vote into their favor. Because at the end of the day, a man or a woman who lives in the continent of Africa, it's either they vote based on tribalism. I am this. So, 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 and so is that. I don't like this person. But instead of this said personality to sit down and think that we have gotten to a level where we need people, political leaders who have a good policy, a policy that will help us in the society, that is not what we vote for. We vote because he is part of my tribe. He is, he is this, he is that. And this is what is causing the problem in Africa. At the end of the day, if you don't work hard, nobody will put food on your table. Nobody will come to your aid. Poor health care. Our health system is border dash. Why? Because knives, scissors are being left in the womb or in the stomach of patients every day. It comes on the news. Due to the gross negligence of some of these medical aspects, we lose people on a daily basis. Why? Because of that, our lackadaisical attitude towards our jobs and on seriousness. People are being, uh, 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 they have been kicking the bucket on a daily basis when we go to our health centers. Though some of our medical experts are doing a fantastic job and I recommend them for that. But some are diabolic people, wicked. That is why I told you in the earlier on that when the axe entered the bush, the trees over there said to themselves that, look, the handle is one of us. It is your own fellow black person who will go into hiding to incite people. They will sabotage you. Once they see you progressing, they will fight you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If the pharmaceutical companies were to heal everybody, don't you think they will go broke? Don't you think? I don't know the day, the medicine that they have been producing, it will be lay waste. You need to understand the game. Life is like a game. Understand the game. If you, if you don't understand the game, you will lose it at the end of the day. Life is like a game. Understand the game. But the, the saddest aspect of life is that by the time the fools, the foolish ones, will learn how to play the game, the smart ones have left the field by then. By the time the fools or the foolish people in the society will learn how to play the game, the live game, the smart ones would have left the pack for a long time. So the pharmaceutical company, they create in medicine to minimize whatever you're going through so that at the end of the day, you come back to them, give them money, and you buy the same drug. And at the end of the day, they will tell you we are, we are producing this medicine. It cures headache, but it has another side effect. And some of the medicine, when it cures your headache, the side effect, effect is stomach pain, stomach ulcer. And that is an illusion that we are believing in. The bank doesn't want you to go scot-free. That is why always debt. When you go to them, you seek for loan, they will give you. You waste that of your seven, eight years. You become highly indebted to them. 
You can't service your loan. So they own you in life. They will dictate for you how to spend your money, how to, they will decide for you. you. You see, some people have gone for loan and now they are servicing the loan. So at the end of the day, the bank will decide how much you are supposed to receive because they have a share in whatever that comes into your hands at the end of the month. They have their share in it. And these are the very people who plays a vital role in our lives in the society. My dear, time waits for no man. If you think you have, if you have that dream that somebody is coming to your aid, you are deceiving yourself. If you have that perception that somebody is coming to rescue you, you are deceiving yourself. We were being thrown onto the street. And at the end of the day, we seized that opportunity. And made something out of it. Because I see every problem as an opportunity for me to hit my target in life. That is how I see life. I see every problem as an opportunity to hit another dimension. And that's exactly what I've been doing till date. And I'm still alive and kicking and I'm still progressing. I am still expanding my territories. And that is life. Get up and do something. Forget about you being educated. You have your masters, but you, 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 you barely feed yourself. If it is ice water, sell it. Go to the construction site and do something. Do something. Do something. At the end of the day, becoming a chief executive officer, becoming the commander in chief of the armed forces, becoming whatever. We will all meet at the junction of money. We are all looking for money. The medical doctor will never get up early at dawn, have his bath, go to the medical center and sit there and say, eh, it's not because of money. I'm here because of human services. No, I am here because I want to become a medical doctor and go to heaven with it. No, they are all there because of money. The lawyer wastes seven years, eight years at the law school, graduates and become a barrister, graduate and become a, 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 an esquire. And all this, it's because of money. But I'm telling you, these things, because of the attitude of some of the people, it is very bad for your friend to come to your aid. And sometimes some people too, no matter what you do, they will not prosper because of the way they think, their state of thinking. They have a low IQ. They, they, they tend to fight people who have them at heart. People that have good intentions for them. They fight them, walk them out of their life, and you see them suffering in life. There are some people who have low IQ, low shedding of what? Ideas. So at the end of the day, if you go into their aid, they will create problems for you, fight you, and when you leave, they will level you or see you as the corporate in there. And that is the reality. Get up and do something with it. Do something with your certificate. When the time comes, I quite remember doing my basic level of education. I had a thought. I developed that concept myself. I said, after graduating and having my first degree, if the government does not employ me, I'll work under the sun and look for a job or create it myself. Because at the end of the day, we are all entering into the city of money. I'll work under the hot scorchy sun just to make ends for a living. Until when I'll get a job that will permit me to sit in an air condition, I'll never rest. So even if it is a construction site, I'll go there, whatever that I can do, I'll go there, ask them, and then they'll support me with it. Whatever that becomes available for me, I'll do it. Today, there are so many ladies in this country so many men in this country. If you have noticed this, after completing school, you have to go and pay extra cash before you get whatever dream job that you're looking for. But when you go to America, Canada, Germany, it is never like that. They are hiring a competent and a hardworking personalities. These are the sad persons that they are looking for. But in Ghana, if you're a hard worker, and a competent, strong. They don't care about you. If you want to enter into the security sector through the military means, 
or the police. What you're supposed to do is that you have to pay. You will pay. You will pay. You will pay huge sums of money before getting a job in your own country. In your own country. Before you'll be offered a job, they will take not less than over $2,000. 25000 to 30000 before you'll be admitted into the security sector. So this person who has paid 30000 before getting that opportunity to enter into the security sector, do you think that you, such person will go there to render his services for humanity? He is going there to look for money because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they took something from him or her before giving that said personality that position. So such people will never get their cards right. If you want to enter into nursing, you pay something before you'll be admitted. Even if you have the qualification, they will never admit you. You have to pay something. Even some of these um, basic level, you have to pay an extreme before you'll be admitted. And after graduating from a, a, a reputable nursing training school, you still have to go in and pay something before you get a job. Before you be employed. Before you get your system of placement. You've got to do something. So you see, everything about the black man. Life has become so hard for the black man. Everything is falling apart. And you are growing too. I am growing. You are growing. And everything gradually keeps on sinking. Everything keeps on falling apart. When they will, these politicians will come, they will promise you a good future. Hey, their performances will become worse. Why? Because every government that is full of gerontocracy, the end result becomes catastrophic. The end result becomes catastrophic. And this is what we are going through. We have voted old men in power. Men who are beyond 70 years. And medically, it is logically accepted that when human hits the age of 70 years, their brain functioning becomes slow. And you as a youth, tr trusting your future in a man who is 70 years and a bed. What do you think will be the end result of the actions you've initiated in life? A man who is 70 years and a bed. Medically, He's not fit to lead you because 70 years going, the brains start working slow. And those who are competent, vibrant within the age of 45 to 60 years, who have that intellect to help us, to, to bring us to the promised land, to bring us to the state that we want to see ourselves, you will see these same political leaders, these political giants. They will incite with the youth to fight such person. And this is how the African country has got into. At the end of the day, what do you get from that set actions that you put into display? And yeah, do something for yourself. Get up and do something. I am a type. I don't rely on church because I have this perception that one day, you wake up and the church will be no more. So what exactly are you going to do? So in the early beginning of my ministry, I never relied on ministry. I've got an extra, extra words that I have to do with my hands. I've got something that I have to do with my hands. So don't sit down, fold your hands, and think that I am a graduate. I'm looking for... A, a graduate work. I'm looking for a white collar job. I want to be employed by the government. I want to sit at the office. I want to sit in an air condition and work there. Whilst you think that if you are able to put one or two things together, it will bring something positive, something to improve your health, something to improve your life, the kind of a condition that you're living in. Every day you sit down thinking that, oh, 
have submitted an application at this company. I'm hoping that they'll call me. Once they have not called you, what are you doing? Get something doing before they call you. Even if it's, it, you see, hustle. Hustle. Step out there. Throw away. Do away with your certificate. Do away with your certificate and hustle like a school dropout. Or else you'll be disgraced. And every day you keep on calling people. Can you send me this? Can you send me that? It is better for people to say, oh, it's been a long time since we heard from you than for you to be available always and they'll tell you that today to this idiot has come here. It is better for people to tell you that it's been a long time since meeting you than for them to say today to this idiot has come here. It is better to become scarce for people than to be there always and people will take your integrity for granted. People will ring your reputation because you are always there. Get up. Do something with it. Because for the look of things, as a youth, in wherever that you are watching me, whatever African country that you are watching me from, what can you boast of? Everything. High cost of living. High cost of living. High cost of living. You can't meet. Even it has gotten to a point where people that are uh, that have white college job, they can't even put food on their table. Because at the end of the day, the salary that you receive, it's just a chicken change. Just imagine a graduate with a degree or master's takes home about $250. Ghana, $250. Now the dollar is 15. So it is what $250. Just calculate it. Just calculate it. You understand what I'm saying. So don't sit down, fold your hands and expect somebody and expect that somebody is coming to help you. No, rescue yourself. Life has become the survivor of the fittest. If you sit down and keep your mouth linked, you will not get anything. Be smart and act smart. Be smart and act smart or else you will be left behind. You will be left out. People will only remember you when you have it. You become relevant in the eyes of people when there is something in your pocket. Once you don't have anything to offer, your relevancy ceases from that moment. So get yourself something doing. Stay blessed.